Hello and welcome. You're watching The Buzz with me, your host, the Queen Banda. In today's Buzz, we're going to meet a woman who advises us that to rely on faith in order to help us get through the hard times. Please meet Faith Barros Goodwin, a mother, a resident in Wareham, and also a hero among women. Meeting you the first time, I knew that you have a great story to tell. Your personality, how vibrant you were, and I said, people have to hear this. Um, it's going to make a great Mother's Day story. You have something to share with the rest of the women out there. Mm. Now, let's talk a little bit about you. Let's meet Faith. Who is Faith? So tell us, who, oh. who is Faith? Faith. <laughs> Peculiar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peculiar. You yeah. know, God has said that, you know, when he, you know, he says... When he makes his children, he makes them his own. Yes. He made me very peculiar. He made me somebody that um, loves yes. unconditionally mm. and loves no matter, no judging. Yeah. Uh, race, color, may you be white, black, yeah. whatever. He, he just knows that when he created me that I was going to be that person that's going to love. Now, your name has an interesting story behind it, yes. right? Yes. How you end up being named a faith. Yes. What's the story? Well, I was raised by two grandparents yes. and um, my grandfather and my grandmother because my mother, you know, had my brother and I. Mm. And we were uh, nine months apart. Yes. And when I was born, she said that the day she looked at me, the very day she looked at me, she said she knew mm -hmm. in her heart that there were going to be things that were going to be difficult and tough. And uh, she said her name got to be, and it's in Cape Verdean it's Beth, but in our language it's Faith. Yeah. And she knew, she said she knew, and she died when I was 12 years old. Yes. And I'll never forget, you know, she died very, it was an accident. She mm. fell down in our backyard getting potatoes. And um, she ended up going to the hospital with broken ankle and, and infection got in and she passed away. But just before then, she just kept telling me, she said, hold on to your faith. Don't ever, ever let it go. And I never did. I have been, I'm 60, I'll be 69 in September and I've never let it go. No matter how bad a tragedy is, my faith is in God. Now, and just as your name, I mean, your story had a lot of events mm -hmm. and almost happening at once that really required you to mm -hmm. practice your name, yes. to have faith. Right. Um, tell us about your upbringing. You, you, you seem very spiritual. Was your upbringing I was, I was a normal young girl. Yes. I, you know, like I said, I went out, I danced, I had fun. <laughs> yes. I was... Uh, you know, involved in a lot of things in school and, and you stuff lived like right that. Here in Wareham? I lived mm -hmm. um, Oakdale is a village yes. with every one of them had it was my aunts, my uncles. We had uh, right next door was my aunt. Up yes. the street was my uh, <laughs> our grandmother. Yes. My other aunt over there. So it was a little village, mm -hmm. which is still here, but now it's taken over by other people. Yes. And uh, my grandfather did say that that one day. He won't be here, but it will never be the same, and it hasn't. There's a few people left okay. in our village, mm. and uh, but we brought up. I brought up with you know my brothers and sisters. I'm the oldest, mm -hmm. and we had a good life. We yes. had a good life. My mother, you know, raised us, you know, until she remarried to my stepfather and raised my. She had four other children. Mm -hmm. We had a beautiful life. Every Sunday. I have to say yes. We went to church every <laughs> Sunday, but I wasn't Catholic. I had okay. to, oh, okay. but she, they were. But we did. We went. Yeah. I got baptized. Mm. I made my confirmation. Mm. I did all the things that my parents wanted me to do. Okay. Okay. Then I got older, and I wanted to know. Well, before then, I wanted to know who God was. Okay. Okay. So I searched because, like I tell people. You know, religion is one thing, mm -hmm. but we have, a, have to have a relationship. Yes. And that's what I wanted. I wanted a relationship mm -hmm. with God. I wanted to know that this something bigger than me mm. created me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because when you think about it, when a child is born, they get eyes. They get fingers. They get feet. You know, they get toes. How? How did this create? How was this created? You, it's got to be this. Mm. So I searched and searched. And, and my mother was very, you know, I got married when I was 19. Mm. And um, my first husband was not 
into religion. Okay. But I never stopped. I yeah. raised my kids. Mm -hmm. I told them that, you know, no matter what, you know, you're going to learn to have this faith in God. I said, because I'm not going to be around forever. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that this is what you have to do. And they did up to the, getting out of high school. Yes. And then when they got older, after my 15-year-old passed away, mm -hmm. then they started to drift. And the Bible says that, you know, your children may go, but yes. they'll always return. Okay. And they returned. They'll they returned. Return. They all returned. Now, do you recall a moment in your life where it occurred to you that no matter what I'm going to be going through, he's always going to be there for me? Oh, my God, yes. The whole thing is when she passed away, when my 15-year-old passed away. Uh, your first it's my first daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, when she passed away. It was so weird because my daughter and my son, which, you know, Hopi, they were with her. And they dropped her. They, my Jennifer dropped them off at home. And that day, they walked in. They said, Mommy, don't let her go out because that guy drives fast. I said, listen, she wanted to go with the kids. I can't stop her. And they said, but Mommy, I said, listen, she's going to be okay. While within... I say a half hour to her leaving the house. She was killed instantly. And I tried so hard to go out the door. And people will say, oh, you know, is this somebody crazy? No. I tried so hard to leave the door to go. I couldn't. I was like blocked. I was blocked. I could not move. And all of a sudden, that's when God told me. He just presented himself. He says, I'll watch over you. I'll take care of you. She's gone home. And I, I knew, I knew. As soon as the, my, the door knocked, I knew that my daughter had passed. I knew. How was that moment? Well, the, before this even happened, okay, my, uh, my sister, I think it was my sister, or my husband and I, we all went to New Bedford. They had a meat raffle. That's how it all started. And I was winning all the meat. Mm. I, they were picking my number, mm -hmm. and I was winning all the meat. And all of a sudden... We got a call. My husband's mother called. He said, you better get home because they're with him accident. Jennifer got an accident. I said, oh, my God. I said, Tommy, let's go. So we went. All of us went. Everybody that was with us left. Yes. We ended up going to the hospital. And all of a sudden, you know how you just came from the hill? Yes. My son, my oldest son, come running out. He said, Mommy, she's gone. And I'm saying, where did she go? Where did they take her? They said, she's gone. And I still didn't put it together yes. that she was gone that yes. way. I walked into the hospital knowing, you know, everybody that works there came up to the door and they said, Faith, we're so sorry. And that's when I realized that this child, 15 years old, has been taken, you know, and I didn't get angry with God. I was upset, crying. I was, I. they said I screamed so loud, but... You don't remember that. I can't even tell you, you know what I did afterwards, but I do know that the Spirit of God just came into my heart. And people, till today, you know, there were stories that, you know, I didn't love my child. How did she react this way? Why did she, you know, it was not Those all that. Those are their stories. Yeah. Yeah. That's it it just, story. it was, I knew that she was gone home with, to be with God. I knew it. Now, yeah. after the death of your child, you said that you were going through some problems. Well, we had to, I couldn't get up in the morning. I was getting, um, I had to be strong for the kids. Yes. Okay, because I didn't want them to see. I used to tell them, no, we're going to be okay, we're going to be okay. Yes. But siblings, and people don't realize this, when one sibling is taken away, it affects your children. Mm. It affects them more than what people really realize. I offered them to go to counseling. They didn't want to go. So we tried to stay as a close knit, but as for me, I was breaking down. Every time they left the house, I would get very, like, depressed. I wouldn't want to get out of the house. And then all of a sudden, things happened that I couldn't, I couldn't pay. I couldn't go to work. I just stood home. I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do anything. And so mortgage had to be paid. Yes. And my husband was the only worker. Mm -hmm. And we just could not afford. And we lost our home. We lost it. And now... Uh, it was okay. We ended up, we found something, and the kids came, you know, with me. And I know they weren't happy because they were getting away from their own lifestyle, you know, their home. But 
because I kept telling them, we're going to be okay. God's going to do us. We're going to be okay. And did you believe in it? Oh, I let me tell you, there's not one day that God hasn't shown me. Every time I had a beautiful home, yes. he gave me ten times better. Yes. Better than I ever had. Better. Than, I lived very nicely in other people's home that I paid rent, but yes. it's okay. <laughs> but he never took, he never gave me something worse. He, it was always more blessed, more blessed. And that's the way it went, you know, until, like I said, we, I went back to work. I worked, my husband worked, and we bought another house. Mm. And um, the house that we bought, um, again, like I tell people, let's be honest, couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. We lost that one. Mm -hmm. And people kept saying, how do you do this? How can you lose, 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 and still be cheerful? Mm. Because, like I said, I've given everything to God, and if he felt that that's what I needed, he would have kept it. He said, I have something different for you. I have different. I have more for you. And that's all it's been. It's been more and more and more, and I've been happy. There's nothing I don't regret. One thing in the past that's happened. Regret of that my daughter, I wish she was here. But if I was to call Jen on the phone and say, Jen, Courtney, and Chad, do you want to come back home? I believe in my heart. They tell me, no, Mommy, we'll wait for you. Because they're peaceful. They have no worries now. They're all at peace. They're all at peace. You end up continue being tested. Yes. You did not only lose one child, but you lost no. multiple. Yes. And how did you lose the others? Courtney was uh, in a car accident. She they ran out of gas and she, you know, a car came and she, you know, dropped her phone and she, the car didn't see her and she was, you know, killed her, you know, and it was an accident. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really feel in my heart that, you know, nobody intentionally yes, yes. goes out there to hurt anybody. And that was a big loss. I mean, Jennifer's was a loss, but Courtney was a big loss because, you know, like I said, it's my own daughter's only child. Yes. And um, we loved her. She was such a pleasant, pleasant, happy, beautiful girl. I mean, she had everything going for her, okay? Um, but again, what we think is good for her, God saw something different. He said, I'm taking her home. And that's what he did. He took her home. And it was rough for my daughter to accept that for a long time. But now she's really working on her faith, knowing that her angel is with her. Because, see, I believe not only in God, but I believe that he left with angels around us. Mm. You know, he left us with, you know, your certain, you have an individual angel. I have one. You just got to seek it and, and search for it. And I believe that. Jennifer, you know, has hers, and I felt her many times. Courtney has hers. I feel them all the time. And then uh, five months to the, to the date of my granddaughter's death, mm. my son, I was at my cousin's wedding, mm -hmm. and uh, he was very artistic. He could draw. He could. So he had done my makeup. Mm -hmm. He did my hair. And he, I mean, I looked so beautiful that day. Yeah. And he was so happy that I was going out. And he said, Mommy, he said, go out and enjoy yourself. I said, I will, buddy. I used to call him baby. Yeah. And so when I got there, he called me once. He wanted to know how I was feeling. I said, fine. So a couple of hours after that, he called me again. He said, Mommy, you having fun? I said, I am enjoying myself. The third call, he goes, Mommy, I love you. And I said, baby boy, I love you more. Yeah. The last call, about 1130, he said, Mommy, I said, what? I said, something wrong? He goes, no. He goes, I just want to tell you, I love you so much. It was, did he used to call you a lot? All this the time. Was, okay, All so time. You, nothing shocked you about the The last call you. shocked me because the way he said it, it was like a final goodbye. Then I left. It's okay. I left my, the, the dance. I left. I went home. And lights were all on, and um, I kept screaming, Chad, Chad, and no answer. Music was on, and I said to myself, that's not my son. Mm. So we had a pawn in the back. I said, maybe it's outside yeah. smoking. So he ended up, um, nobody answered. My husband, poor thing, was going up the stairs, 
he came back. My husband's a very dark-skinned mm -hmm. man. He came down, and he saw him laying there. He says, he's gone. And I tried, I picked him up. The adrenaline just does what they have to do. I picked him up, put him downstairs on the rug, and tried to work on him, but he had already been gone. That, that, that very time that he called me, I believe he, that's what happened. And uh, I had to call my, you know, family, and I called the cops and everybody that came. But the question was that, you know, he was on so many medication, and he was severely bipolar that maybe, you know, he got off his medication, and he just, I don't know. He didn't leave me a note. Yes. But I do know that he loved me, and he loved his daughter. He loved his family. And, um, you know, I... I don't know, I don't understand, you know, suicidal because of the fact that, you know, they don't leave notes, you mm. know. It's like they don't want to hurt you, but they do hurt you. Yes. And, you're, you know, people say he was selfish. No, he wasn't selfish. He was hurting. How it, did you survive that day? Oh, God, it was like, I just was numb for so long because I said, I found my baby. He's my baby. I said, and I had, I tried to revive him. I tried so hard. And all of a sudden, I just looked up. I said, God, I can't. What am I going to do? And all of a sudden, I went in my bedroom, and I prayed, and I prayed. I said, God, please give me the strength. Give me the power. Give me everything you got right now because I don't know what I have to do. And like I said, it's like a pouring comes over me. I can't explain to people. It's like something comes over, like somebody's pouring water over me and just cleanses, and I'm able to move on. And I moved on. I, you know, got him, we got him all dressed. He looked so handsome, and he was a good, good boy. And um, that was it. That was, you know. And my husband, I have to say this, there's no man that um, married a woman with five kids has gone through what he's gone through with my children and my, my you know, with all this that has happened that has loved as much as he has. He's been my support. God gave him to me because he's helped me so much in my, you know, walk with them in the tragedy, you know what I mean? We don't say much about it, but we feel each other, mm -hmm. you know, because of the love of God that we have. We feel it. Now, from all of that tragic events that you had to go through, in which you have pulled yourself back again, days like Mother's Day, what does that mean to you? Uh, when Mother's Day comes, you know, I believe that God blessed me with them. He gave me beautiful children, nice children, and I was blessed because I go back to the Bible when Mary watched her only son go on that cross to die for me and for you. That gives me, and it shows me that why should I feel sad? He gave it to me. He blessed me with them. I'm, 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 I was blessed. And Mother's Day, when it comes, I I just go on just, but everybody else that's here, mm -hmm. I just, I present that Mother's Day, let them know that, you know, my daughter and I, we go out to brunch, you know, uh, together, and we share each other's, you know, heartaches, but we also rejoice in it, because there's nothing more you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, what? I can sit down and cry all day long. I can, you know, uh, feel sad, but where is it going to get me? Where is it going to put me? in a state of mind that I can't think. I want to know everything around me, the surroundings around me, and I won't let death or anything else put me back. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go forward. So I try to have a nice Mother's Day. Like I said, my daughter and I, my sister, we all go out for a brunch mm. and, you know, have fun and laugh. You know, and we bring them up. We never let them, you know, we say, well, remember what we had Mother's Day with Courtney and how funny she was, yes. you know, and Chad always was the one that would be, you know, Easter was just recently. He dressed up in a bunny outfit, went through the whole town with candy, gave all the kids. We talk about those things and we enjoy. We live with the memories. And that's what matters. You live with memories, and they were good memories. They were good. How do you talk to other fellow women who may have gone through the same issues that you have gone through, losing a child and so forth, but they're not into religion? Because to you, religion or your belief in God is your main core of strength. To those women who... You know... Really, they're not into that. Right. How would how you, you bring them, them back? Love them. 
give them the hug, give them a love that, that, and let them know, you know, I've been through it. Like this one girl, you know, when she lost her son, she said, two days before this, she said, you looked at me and you said, go home and love your son. Love him. Don't judge him. Love him. And she did. And three days after that, he was gone. So mothers that don't really, you know, I will let them know what I believe in, what I've gone through, but I want to love them and let them know that a hug, a smile, a, a little card, something that will lift them up and let them know. And some, some can't accept it. Yes. Some people can't accept. You know, they don't believe, they get mad, they say, well, if God was that good, why did he do this to my child? Why, did, why does he have all these kids sick? Honey, we have two forces in this world. We have good and evil. God's not out there to destroy. He's out there to bring you forth, to bring you to where you're supposed to be. And it saddens me, and if it saddens me, I know it saddens him when he sees people that just don't believe. And he tells me all the time, just just be and move on. So if they don't accept what I tell them, I don't push it on them. I just accept what I have. But if they don't, I just want to hug them. I just want to tell them that they're going to be okay. They're going to be okay. And that's it. That's all I can tell them. That's all I can show them. Is to get, you know, you're going to have to do one day in life. You're going to have to get yourself in a position that you have to think about. They're not coming back. But you can go to them. And I tell everybody, if there is no such place, I have nothing to lose. But if there is, you got so much to gain. Mm -hmm. So much to gain. Now, you, you, you work at uh, Toby Hospital. Yes. And I'm 35 years. 35 years. 35, my lovely hospital. Uh, do you enjoy it? Uh, well, you'll I definitely enjoy, enjoy it. I can yes. see that smile. Toby has been my home, you know, has been, you know, I've seen the good, the bad mm -hmm. in there. And I'll tell you, they supported me every time a tragedy has happened. They've been a family to me. But I, you bring way more to them. When I first met you, I said, if I was sick, this is the face, this is the personality that I want to be greeted by. Because you made a hospital <laughs> feel like not a hospital. I said, oh my I God, them laugh. <laughs> where is the party? <laughs> I am who I am. And like I said, I don't judge. I don't look at people. You know, I try to bring happiness. You know, happiness and joy. Because like I said, yes, they're sick. Those patients are coming in. They don't want, <laughs> they want to see mm -hmm. a smile. They want to see somebody that's going to be there, you know. And like I said, my coworker and I that work, we laugh all day long because we know yeah. that we, the sadness that's happened. She lost her child, her only child. And the day that she lost her child, she called me to go to the hospital. I went there and she said, Faithy, I can't do this. I said, you're going to do it. And look at her, seven years. She can laugh, she can joke. They have to see it. You know, you can talk it. You have to see it. But you have to see. When you see somebody that believes and sees that they've been through all that I've been through, and I'm still up, I'll never look down. I'm always looking up because I know, I know that I know that there's a lot more to life. Are there days where you question it? Never. I never, and that is honest truth, never question God. Why me? You know what I say? Mm. Why not me? Why not me? Why? Thank you for watching The Buzz with me, your host, Quinn Banja. Please tune in next week for more Buzz. Until then, keep safe. Thank you.